All right, what is up, all you beautiful people? In today's video, we're talking about what you need to do to increase that mother f revenue. Yes, sir. That's what I like to hear. So today we're talking about how to make more moolah in your business. Okay. And I know what you're thinking, Blair. I know what you're thinking, Blair. Don't I just have to increase the price of my of my product or my service? Or do I don't I just have to cut costs? Yeah, I mean, I'm sure that's what every other mother F and YouTuber probably says, but I'm not everybody, everybody's YouTuber, okay? I'm not an average YouTuber, I'm different. You know how my body different, all right? So let's talk about a couple of things that I've learned based upon running multiple different businesses, based upon running my crypto business, based upon running my software business, based upon running my marketing agency, based upon running my contracting business. Based upon running all these other hustles and making all these other investments, what blade have you learned based upon previous experiences, based upon previous mistakes, have you learned that has really significantly increased your revenue? Let's talk about this right now because this is so important and I hope you guys take this really seriously because it can make you a whole lot of money, all right? So let's talk about this. And I got a little list right over here. So a couple of things that you should do to increase your revenue. And start from the very beginning. One thing that you need to do is you need to get feedback from your business. Okay. And I know this sounds, maybe it sounds simple. Maybe it sounds obvious, but most people don't take the time to really do this. All right. And really establish a baseline and autopilot way to just get more feedback and more, get more testimonials, get more success stories, things like that. You know, the art of social proof is so big, so important. You know, I, let me give you, you start us off with an example. And then I'll talk about ways I've automated my feedback system. I'm going to talk about ways about that. But let me first start it off with an example so you guys can kind of earn my trust, understand how imperative this is to your business. Excuse me. So I used to sell a whole bunch of courses on credit repair marketing. And the ways I would do it would be one of two ways. One way what I would do is I would... One thing that I would do is I would just sell people over the phone. You know, people were scheduling an appointment with me and I would sell them over the phone directly. Okay. And another way of doing it, my favorite way of doing it, my real truly big money maker way of doing it is to host a webinar. You know, what I would do is I would host a webinar and I might have 10, 20, even 30 people in this webinar. And I specifically remember me doing this in college so much, so much in college. Whereas I would literally... I would talk to one of my, one of my professors and I'd be like, hey, can I rent out this room? Can I borrow this room for like a Saturday night so I can have a big webinar with my, with my, with my, squad, with my squad, with my Facebook group managers, with my community members, okay? And I'll get this room, same same kind of like setup I have here, and I have a whiteboard in the back. And what I would do is I start off with a call to action, then I'll talk about my value. I provide a ton of value and make people fall in love with me. And after that, I'll close up with another call to action. And throughout this time, people were asking me questions. And throughout this time, people were making remarks saying, wow, Blade actually knows what he's talking about. And towards the end of the video, I'll be doing that little call to action. Be like, hey, if you want the full course on how to do this, click here. And what I found is that if I did a big call to action, I had a bunch of people on this webinar, a bunch of people kind of talking. It was a lot easier to sell people rather than doing it one on one individually. You know, whereas one by one individually might take me an hour to do that close, talk to people, you know, figure out exactly what you want, maybe I don't know, 30 minutes to an hour. Whereas if I did this webinar, yeah, it might be an hour, but I would get, be able to get at least five to 10 closes on this, mainly because it's the art of social proof. When you're able to convince a, a, a crowd, it's going to get more people, it's going to attract more people. So let's say I had this crowd, like 10 people, okay? And I'd say five people bought, I'm probably going to get another two, three people buying just because those five people bought, you know? It's like the art of crowdsourcing, the art of people trying to, they don't want, they don't want to miss out or... I, I don't know. Think about it like this. You know, I'm sure you've heard this example in the past, but you know, and there might be an extreme example. This might be an extreme example, but it, it exemplifies my point is that when you go, when you ever seen those riots where one person, boom, 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 they stand up on top of a car, get the microphone down, be like, hey, listen to me. We got to do X, Y, and Z. You got to ride. You got to go crazy. And then everybody goes crazy because that one person that's talking loud that left and that has the microphone, you know, everybody wants to listen to him. You know, what I'm trying to say is that when you have a crowd, when you have multiple people, it's a lot easier to convince a vast majority of the people when you already have a vast majority of the people kind of convinced. 
It's already, it's like, I don't know what it is, art of social proof. I know there is an actual name for this, this psychological thing. But let me give you one more, one more example, and then I'll talk about how to actually get that feedback, how to get social proof, how to get more success stories. But let me give you one more example before I wrap this up and I talk about the next section. But when you go in an elevator, boom, and there's like five people there. When you walk in the elevator and everybody's facing the door, like typically, and then you walk in and you face the left, okay? You don't necessarily face the door. What you're going to find out, what you're going to see is that slowly as these elevators going up, you're going to start to see more, more people not no longer facing the door, but starting to face the left, facing the way you're facing. It's because people are also afraid of standing out. So they rather join rather than standing out. You know, I once again, I, I really don't know what this this psychological term is, but trust me, it is real and it happens all the time. People trust you because other people trust you. Okay, trust me. So, Blade, yo, Blade, how do you get that feedback? Yo, Blade, how do you get that feedback? How do you get the success stories? Let me tell you, right? But Blade's got you, all right? There's a bunch of ways of doing this. Now, we got to think about first the ways you communicate with your clients. How do we do this? You know, yeah, we got we got texting, we got emailing, we got calling, we got we can write snail letters, you know, snail mail. We got everything. There's a lot of things that we can do. So one of my most successful ways of really driving out of feedback, specifically for my credit repair companies when I would when I would help the market, is actually a really cool way of doing this. Whereas what I would do is I would I would tell them to write a letter, you know. And in that letter, you know, you take the, take the letter, handwrite their address, handwrite their name, because it increases open rates and convert and open rates of the actual snail mail. And in there, you're gonna put a, you're gonna put a dollar in there, and you put a letter in that in there. And what you're gonna say is on that letter, you say, "Hey, I have more money like this. All you gotta do is send me over to a testimonial, a video testimonial, or a written review." And to make it even easier, to really want make them make sure that they leave your testimonial is what I'll do. And it's super easy to do is put a QR code on the letter as well, too. If you get a QR code on the letter, either connect it to your Dropbox or whatever the F you want to put it on and make sure that on the letter, you tell them like, hey, all you got to do is scan that little QR code and you can put that little video success story directly in my Dropbox. And once you do that, we'll send you, I don't know, a $20 Amazon Starbucks Dunkin' gift card. $10 Starbucks gift card, you know, by being able, by initially putting in that dollar initially into the letter, people are going to trust you and be like, wow, this person actually does what he says he's going to do. And I'm sure that if I actually follow up and do what I said I'm going to do, he's going to give me more money. And chances are the case that's going to happen. You know, let's, let's make a quick comparison really quick. Whereas you put the dollar in the letter and you don't. Okay, because we have, we, I mean, I don't have the exact numbers on me, but I understand the averages. Is that so? Let's say you send out 10 letters. Okay, so you send out 10 letters. One of them has a dollar, one of them don't has a dollar, doesn't have a dollar in it. The one that doesn't have a dollar, you know, you might be getting like one or two responses, like nada, all right, nada. But if you send out 10 letters with a dollar in there, yo, know, that significantly drives it back up to like five, six people out of 10 send you those uh, success stories, which is actually very, very significant because it's a lot. You know, you, you spend $10, maybe 20 bucks at most making these letters, you know, putting a stamp on them, boom, and sending them out to your clients. You're really not spending a lot of money on that. And if you spend 20 bucks and you get at least even one, even two success stories, boom. Oh my gosh, that's so incredibly profitable because what you can do is you can take those success stories, you can put it in your Instagram, you can put it in your Facebook, you can put it in Google My Business, you can use it as an ad to get added to the beginning, to the end of a promo video. Oh my gosh, it's the, 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 the this thing is it's endless. The opportunities are endless once you have the success stories. But the thing is, those success stories are so valuable because it provides social proof. If somebody else is talking about your product, you're more likely to believe that somebody else rather than the owner, rather than me. The owner of Funaga Labs kind of just makes sense that way. And that's the way it is. Okay. All right. So we talked about getting feedback. We talked about paying for feedback. We talked about a secret method to get more feedback. You know, we talked about how important social proof is. Okay. Now, real quick, let's talk about a very important psychological thing that you can do to yourself to increase your revenue. All right. Now, this one might be a little bit tough for you guys to, I guess, this might be the hardest one to really implement. And now this mainly comes down to ultimately being a leader, having those leadership traits, having those alpha traits, that I call them. Okay. 
because there are days, I mean, there are days where, and for everybody, there are days where you just don't want to get out of bed. There are days where you're laying in the bed, maybe it's raining, maybe you have your party the night before, I don't know, where you wake up in the morning and you're like, wow, I am really tired. Maybe you worked out the night before and you're like, wow, I'm really tired. I want to get out of bed, you know, and everybody has those days. The most successful people in the world have those days where they are just tired. They don't want to get out of bed. Maybe they feel sick. But there's a difference between a regular person and an alpha. There's a regular, difference between a regular person and an entrepreneur. There's a difference between a regular person and a leader. The leader, the alpha entrepreneur, understands that they have a lot of people relying on them. If you think about it, like my, my for example, like my companies, bro, my companies. Funnel Hacker Lab is a minimum an eight-man team. You know, at minimum, I'm sure I'm not counting some people and I feel like a jerk for forgetting that. But Valify, oh, I don't want to get started on how many people are on that team. It's huge. I know we have five people on the main core team, but we got mods, we got developers, we got marketing agencies, and then we got a massive community of like 10,000 people. What I'm trying to say is that it's so important that you do the shit that you got to do. And not everybody's built that way. Not everybody's built that way in which they can get out of bed and get to work and have people rely on them. Because I'm not going to lie, that 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 fact that we got so many people relying on me and so many people relying on my team to actually perform, for some people, that's a lot of stress. That's a lot of like weight on your shoulders. Your back must be hurting from all carrying all that weight on your back. And yeah, it does. We get tired. You know, some days I might feel sick. Some days I might get out of bed and be like, oh, gosh, damn, I don't want to get out of bed. But the difference that that really significates, that really solidifies, I don't know if you use the right pro proper terminology, but whatever, it makes me sound smart. <laughs> but the, the difference between a leader, an alpha, an entrepreneur, and a regular person is the fact that that person is might feel sick, might feel tired, might feel like they don't want to do shit, but still gets out of bed anyway and handles their business. Handles their business and they make their business happen regardless of how they feel. Okay. And it's really, it's really another thing to kind of go off of that really being a leader is the fact that every single day when you are in this business, while you're the entrepreneur, while you're running this business, you're going to run into decisions that you make every single day. And most of these decisions are going to rely on your business. Whereas if you don't make the right decision, your business could die. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that you need to make a lot of decisions. You need to be able to, once again, if you haven't seen my last video, how to prioritize your day based upon how much energy you have in the day, you can watch that. But what I'm trying to say is that you need to make, when you, you, when you, when these decisions come to you, these opportunities come to you, as the entrepreneur, as the leader, as the person that's responsible for making the company more money, you need to be able to handle these decisions as an alpha. And the way I mean by that is without emotions, with strictly a business mindset. Because if you're if you're handling these things, like let me give you a quick example over here, all right? Based upon what my developers were telling me the other day. Whereas we have a bunch of things that we want to do on the roadmap for Funnel Hacker Labs. We want to add a tracking system. We want to update the, the application. You know, we want to move the app from uh from what it it's programmed on right now, Bluehost and WordPress, and using databases, HTML databases. You want to move that all over to Node.js, which is a just an upgraded version of it and it runs a lot better a lot faster and it gives us more capability in the future to add more features onto it with a lot more ease ease of use and overall everything now is on node.js node and so it's just gonna be a lot easier what i'm trying to say is that as the business owner as the guy responsible of handling the business and making the business the most revenue possible i gotta make decisions do we want to upgrade the app you know, which isn't really going to make us a whole lot of more extra money. It's going to make you run faster, easier, and just look better. Or are we going to add this tracking system where it could make us a whole lot of money, but it's going to cost a lot of money and take a lot of time. You know, so I got, I got to figure out, I got to make a decision. Where are we going to divide our resources to, you know, and where should we divide these resources to, to what will make the company the most money? What will make sense, the most sense for the company? Okay, because realistically, we, we need them both. All right, we do. But we need to be able to divide resources to the, and prioritize the resources to the thing that will make more sense to the company. What I'm trying to say is that if I'm making these decisions while thinking about this 
this biatch that I did that just broke up with me, or this biatch that just cheated on me, or I'm thinking about some family problems, or if I'm out here thinking about why, I don't know, some someone dumped me or something like that, and that's that's taking up a majority of my mind. I'm not going to make clear decisions. I'm really not. So, and now this is not for everybody, you know, entrepreneurship, leadership. Alphanism, I don't know what to call it. It's not for everybody because that stress is a lot of weight on your shoulders, like we're saying. So it's not for everybody, but I'm the type of person, and if you're anything like me, you're the type of person that if you're living your life without stress, like you're living your life without meaning, and it just doesn't feel good, it doesn't feel exciting. You know, I'm the type of guy that if I don't feel stressed, if I don't feel like I got people relying on me, if I don't feel like I don't know, I'm not I'm not excited, you know, I'm bored. I need to to feel that stress. I need to be pushing myself. I need to be challenging myself. I need to solve problems. I need that. I absolutely need that. Otherwise, for me, I'm not even going to lie. If I'm not doing that, if I'm working for somebody else, life's kind of boring, you know? It, let's say, who cares if I'm making less money? I don't care. I like the fact, I need the fact, and I'm definitely not, but I, I need the fact to know that like I'm making my own decisions. You know, I like that. I like that feeling. And that just that that feeling is just a entrepreneurial, a leadership quality, an alpha quality. I don't know what it is, but the ability to be able to have other people rely on you is a massive quality that you need to have as a leader to run businesses. So this is running back right quick. All right, boys and gals that are watching this videos, just recap. All right. So what do we talk about today? We talked about today, we talked about receiving feedback. We talked about how important feedback is to your business, especially in the regards of social proof and, tr and getting other people to trust your business. And one of the best ways of getting more feedback, getting success stories, getting to testimonials is by actually having sending out individual snail mail to people, you know, putting a dollar on there, putting a QR code on there and saying, hey, you receive more money like this. If you scan that QR code and drop a video of a success story into our Dropbox, okay? We talked about that. We talked about taking that stuff and distributing among your, your Google My Business, distributing among your Facebook, distributing among your Instagram, distributing among all your ads to really blow it up and mark trust into your business. You know, after that, we talked about how important that social proof is and how much it would actually increase conversions. And then after, after that, we talked about some leadership characteristics that will boost your business's revenue, more like making decisions without emotions, you know, being the right, being the right type of mindset when you are making these decisions. You know, we, we, we reflected on the last video that we talked about, whereas you only have a couple of hours throughout the day, you only have a certain amount of energy throughout the day. So you want to focus that energy on the most important parts of your business, you know, focus that energy on, on the most important decisions. So you're able to make those decisions with the, right amount of understanding so you're able to make these decisions as best you can so guys i hope this video will help guys and if you have any other questions comments concerns you always know you can put them down below i'll help you guys out and i'll see you all at the top peace out all you guys